James Altucher's yep. podcast, and you put it out there, and I took it, and um, and thank you for the kick in the butt. It's been a total game changer for me. Go figure. Did, did you uh, did you get a bunch of takers? Yes, I think we did. I'm like actually scared that I made that claim because I don't know what's actually out there of like people that I actually deserve I owe podcast to. So I'm even scared <laughs> for this to show up on the vlog because now everyone's like, no, no, I took the challenge too. So. You, you will represent everybody that, I, I'm gonna tell, I'm much busier than James, so I think James has to do the rest. So. Okay, all right, well, I'll, t- I'll tell him, I'll tell him <laughs> that. Um, all right, so this led me to other things, so after this, I was like, wow, I really like this, I really like this medium, so um, I started doing flash briefings because I found these guys that are basically like the Libsyn of flash briefings yep. where it takes like one minute to get it up yep. and then I read your chapter in your book last night uh, in, in crushing it all about you're calling it voice first are you going to use the, is that term for like flash briefings or all voice? That to me uh, look I think voice is kind of the term I'm using for podcasting and flash briefings and Google and Apple HomePod and like all the stuff that's coming with voice. And so so, the pod is gonna do let us do briefings as well. Oh yeah, I mean, home, <laughs> Apple, and Google, and Amazon, all these people, their business is to create a platform, then let people build on top of it, and then make a percentage of the action. Who do you think's gonna win? No clue. Could care less. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I also want to ask you. So before this podcast, I was I was very nervous, and yes. I was telling my friend like I'm really nervous. And, then I said, but I just have to remember that you're just a human being. Yes. And you put on your pants one leg at a time. And my friend I've like, actually put know, my I'm pants so two sure legs at that. a time. I jump what? into my pants. That's exactly what he said. He's like, <laughs> I think he jumps into his pants. <laughs> um, so, but then that got me thinking, like, what do you, what do, you do in the morning? Uh, I wake up, I grab my phone, I go take a poop. I make sure oh, nothing's God. on fire in the world, of my world. You know, my biggest thing, look, when you're the, when you're the CEO, of a thing, it's your fault, you're the last line of defense, and so that's the tough spot and the fun spot. And so, really my morning is really interesting, right? Like, it's funny, I can actually break down my morning. The first thought that runs through my mind is am I tired? Like, did I get the sleep that I needed today to go hard? And like, the good news is, like that, I'm in a good place nine out of 10 times. And then the one time that I'm not, then I'm like, oh, I hope that my workout today is gonna wake me up or make me feel better. So I love that I work out now because whereas I used to not have that and like struggle through the first couple hours and then my adrenaline would kick in. Now usually it's very rare for me to like be tired and go through a workout and not be ready for the day, right? Um, But the biggest thing I do is I check on fires. I make sure nothing happened in London. Don't forget it's five or six hours ahead of me. So even when I wake up at six, um, they're already you know well into their day and there could be a, a problem. Um, and so, and overnight in LA, right? You know, if I go to sleep at midnight, it's still only nine there. Clients are still doing things. So, um, I, I make sure there's no problems. Um, what are you doing right now? I'm, ro- I'm, I'm rolling a bat on my lower left back okay. because I'm fixing my lower left back muscle issues and tissue quality. And it's been a very weird, you know, couple weeks for my team watching me like do all sorts of weird things with my back. But it's really good. I've, uh, for everybody who's watching right now, tissue quality, I don't know if people know this, your brain protects you from like your most inefficient physical attributes and creates huge inefficiencies by protecting you. And I've realized how limited I was in my rotation and bending and stretching. And, and it's not about you know, yoga and massages. This is like real fucking tissue work. Like you gotta really like do it. But it's been amazing and I'm getting, I've had a bad back for like, 25 years and I'm like this close. I'm like on the final pieces right now, which is why I'm like, I'm taking this huge piece of wood, right, it's a half a baseball bat, and like ramming it into my back. Like ramming my back. Where did you get this idea? Like did someone recommend it to you or do you just thought this looks like something that would work? Uh, No, my my trainer Jordan, we roll, we roll on a hard ball, a lacrosse ball, we we have a stick, 
This is not something he recommends. This is just I know this is working because I'm beating up the muscle. Like I can feel what's happening. You know, right. it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So back to your morning routine for just a second. Like, do you think that you're natural? Like, okay, I want to know how long you, how long it takes you to reach for your phone, and like, do you stay in bed and read your tweets, or are you up immediately? And um, if you didn't have to get up early, would you naturally be a morning person or a night person? If I didn't have to wake up early, I'd be naturally a night person. Uh, I grab the phone and I'm usually, I never lay in bed. Like I'm up, I grab the phone, I go get a drink of water, go to the bathroom. Like, like it's like I'm usually, like after I wake up, I'm, in, I'm out of bed within seconds. Um, um, usually because I try to maximize sleep, so like I've gotta go. Like I've gone to the extreme of like, I've gotta work out in four minutes. Like I've gotta go to the bathroom, like brush my teeth, put on gym clothes and get downstairs. Like I keep it tight. Um, so I would naturally be a night person. I like to get work done at like midnight, one, two, three. I don't like the morning. Um, I wake up way earlier than I used to. There was a time where I was such an extreme night person building wine library, I'd go to sleep at three or four and not get into wine library until 11. That happened for like a year. That's how extreme I went. But now I get up at six or seven um, and that's how I roll. Okay. Um, so I also want to ask you, like, I, we get the sense, all the people who love and adore you and you maybe the people even who don't, uh, that we really know you because you know you're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and and I really do feel like we we do know you. You do to some degree. Yes. But what what would we be surprised to know about you? Well, you know nothing about my family. You don't know anything about my family life. I'm very. That's true. You really don't talk about that. No, I mean like, uh, you know, nothing about my kids or my wife or I spend very little on that. We keep that private, so you guys don't know that part of me. And I think the part that most. I think the part that most people don't know about me is all of you, anybody that likes or dislikes me, but more likes me, has to keep a percentage to themselves to keep them protected from me not letting them down. Right, when somebody admires or likes somebody, there's a protective mechanism that everyone has which is, man, I really hope he's like that in real life, right? So it's been really, really, Babin, what about you? That happened, right? Did you, when you first started working here, there was a part of you like, oh, I hope he's that real in real life. Like, like, right? Like, you know, like, and you didn't have the same dynamic because I was in a different place. So, nonetheless, like, I think the biggest thing that people don't know about me is that I think I'm even nicer in real life than I project. Okay. You agree, right? So that's. Because I see everything. Right, because you see the real stuff that I can't show where I'm being really nice, but it's inappropriate for me to show it because it may look like, make look the other person look a little weird. All right, well that's like the perfect lead in to this question that I'm dying to ask you or just I want to mention because like it really, um, I saw this the other day where you said that like you're in this unique position where you have like crossed the chasm into like being cool for the younger people. And yes. My 17 year old son like is, you know, completely. He agrees. Under every word. <laughs> yes. Um, and I have to quote it exactly because it was Please. so good. You said, um, you said, if I can achieve making self-awareness and patience and gratitude and empathy cool characteristics of an alpha male, I will have made a real impact. And I thought, God, that is like, <laughs> for all the moms and dads that are probably so mad at you that they're <laughs> of changing their minds about college, yes. like that, you probably get just as many love letters or more after a statement like that. But then, but then I'm like, can, can we really do that? And like, what would it take to really make those things cool without it just being like a good quote? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm doing it. Like, I, you know, with me, my quotes come after I've already done something. I would have never had the audacity to say something that ludicrous if I hadn't started seeing it actually start to happen. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it is amazing. Like, I, I really think it's very special when somebody comes along and is a great communicator and can move people's minds and does it for good. I mean, because some do it for good, some do it for bad, and some never realize they can do it. You know, why do you, you know, think about how excited I am about both your 17-year-old son and you. For your 17-year-old son, I'm gonna create a new paradigm of cool and hopefully that will work. And for you, like I inspired you to do. And now you're fi- and now you're finding out something that you're doing that you enjoy and you may be good at. That's incredible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 cool. It's, Listen, it's, 
I talk about it as if it's not even me living it because it's almost too heady for me to like, I, I'm being serious right now. I try not to overthink it because it becomes a little daunting if you realize you're sitting on a superpower, right? So I try to like take it for what it is. I try to make my, you know, I, to, the truth is I actually think it's a bigger indication on my parents and my environment than it is on me so I don't get big headed about it. I'm, I, I know my intent is to do the best I can. I don't feel daunted by the responsibility. I don't feel like it's my, I don't think I'm that special that I have to change the world. But I'm more than interested in trying. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, but do you, I mean, I would imagine that if you did think about it too hard, it would get kind of like um, scary or I don't know, maybe it would feel like a burden. Um, and you say that, I mean, and, and you teach us to like, really, we just should care, care immensely about everything, but not, but not give a crap about what people say. Um, but I, but I wonder like, don't you, don't you ever get your feelings hurt? Like I get my feelings. I, I get, I get my feelings hurt every day. What's that? I get my feelings hurt every day in like a fake way. Like I'm a human. I'm just right. not very emotional when it comes to this because I understand the score. I'm unbelievably emotional. I'm I'm completely unemotional. Like I have. I think I have this great balance that's coming from extreme characteristics. So, any t- I mean, you know, I mean, there was a. There was a engagement I had today on Twitter where two guys in Europe or somewhere not in the US, I, I kind of quickly glanced, who I think were from the advertising industry were making fun of me. Like one of them put a picture of me where it says, hustle your fucking face off. And he said something to the degree of like, this is an actual quote. Like, can you fucking believe this guy? And his buddy or, or a, a similar thinking guy jumped in and said, like, or, and I think he said, try to find a quote that's more ludicrous than this kind of thing. And then his buddy found one, but I don't think that one was a real quote because the other one was real. But just took a picture of me and put some ridiculous quote that I think I did say. Like, bottom line is, they were bantering. I jump in because my feelings are hurt because I don't know, I, like, I want these two guys to like me, not think I'm a douchebag. I reply with, with my true feeling, which is like, yo guys, can you stop creating ammo for my friends to make fun of me with? Um, and I wish you good health and like, I hope we get to share a glass of wine because I noticed one guy's from Australia, I like Australian wines. It was interesting, the other guy, one of the guys, I didn't, and then I got to the office, I didn't see if the other guy's engaged. One guy jumped in and said, touche or fair enough, like if you're ever in Australia, let's grab that glass. And I loved it because like, it's less that my feelings are hurt, it's that I respect everybody else's opinions no matter who they are, even within my own success. Like I think I'm gonna be all time, yet I don't believe that your or your 17 year old sons or those two guys' opinions are any less valuable than mine. I just think my ultimate superpower is empathy at the highest level. I think I'm so empathetic that, it, that everything else I am is almost secondary even though I have a lot of other strong characteristics, strengths and weaknesses. Um, so of course my feelings are hurt because I'm so empathetic yet I'm so self-aware and confident that it's not able to fully penetrate and become a, a negative, I think it becomes a positive because I know how to calibrate the pushback or the name calling. So obviously, mm. some that of that good is articulation. and you were born with that and then the other part is that you had great parents. Yes, and, gr- and great circumstance, right? I lost a lot as a kid. I didn't speak the language, we had no money. I wasn't a great athlete. I was a terrible student. I've lived my first 18 years of my life as a fucking loser, which made the next fucking 100 years super easy because I wasn't scared of losing. A lot of kids are coddled, overloved, eighth place trophies. And overloved, I actually believe, that's not true. Let me start again. A lot of people are coddled. A lot of people are eighth place trophies. A lot of people didn't deal with adversity because they figured out how to run the school model and were straight A students gifted with talent in sports. And so they were winning their first 18 years. So when they go into real life with inevitable losses, especially for somebody who like pandered to the system, which means they then go work in a corporation where they have no control and merit doesn't ride, the, you know, I'm the reverse. Were you, you said you were losing the first 18 years, but I have the sense that you were probably like a popular kid at school. Very. Were you? Yes, you were I was super, and, and that part has never gone away. I was popular for, uh, you know, I have charisma, so that's always good. 
I was popular because I was super nice. Like nice has been, you know, over the last week or two, I've started pushing kindness and nice. It's funny. Yes. You know, like I, I feel like almost just like I figured out my back was hurt after I figured my adductor was hurt and my knee and my neck and like my shoulder. I feel like I'm just going through my life and discovering, wait a minute, it's not just hustle. Wait a minute, it's not just sales. Wait a minute, it's not just empathy. Like, and I feel like somewhere literally within the last 10 days, I'm like, huh, kindness is probably a real big reason this is all working out for me. And so in school, my kindness was amazing because I was so self-confident that I wasn't willing to make fun of kids when that's what the cool kids did and that in a weird way, over time, made me quite popular with a lot of people. Oh my God, I just thought of the name of your new book. It's cr- Crush them crush with Kindness. Instead of, <laughs> kill em. instead of kill them with kindness, crush them with kindness, that's I, it. I just think, send me like 1%, that's all I need. I think kindness is something that I will continue to tap into this year. This will be the year of kindness in my content, I can feel it. And I'm excited about that because Self-awareness and gratitude and work ethic and honor I think is something that an alpha male can kind of like get there to. Kindness, being sweet, being a sweetheart is just not necessarily uh, the thing that I think people um, naturally gravitate towards. And it's funny, my public persona, AKA when I do interviews and speeches, I wouldn't say is filled with kindness. I'm my most combative and competitive. It's that my real life is so filled with kindness and sweetness. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see how I tap into this and how I articulate it. Oh wow, I just can't wait to see where this goes. I think that's amazing. And it's funny because the other challenger, uh, James Altucher, when he came on the show, I asked him, like, uh, when, you, you know, have you had situations where you've interviewed people who are, you know, winners or they're these big guys um, who are really like jerks. And he said, you know, not really. And one or two, he said, but the truth is people don't get that far usually by being super jerks. And definitely, so. and definitely not people who are, are playing in a game that is based on merit, like entrepreneurship. Right. Right, like, like it's a little bit easier to navigate through corporate, which is a lot of what we're seeing now in the world, because you can be protected because the market isn't fair. It's hedged by the tastemakers and the gatekeepers. But like, the, the more entrepreneurial, the more fair it is, to James's point, the more likely you have to be a decent person. And definitely if you want to build something really big, for the long haul. Like I'm trying to build an absolute business empire and be admired. And like, that is a, uh, that is a very um, zero sum game. Like either you are kind and talented or you're not. Who would it mean the most to you besides your parents and your kids and everybody? Uh, who would it mean the most for you to be admired by? I mean like anyone specifically that like you've got filed away that you're yeah. like, yeah. Probably Brandon Warnicky. He runs Wine Library, he's my best friend. Uh-huh. To, me, to me it's very simple. I wanna be admired by the people that know me the best because they actually know the truth. Like it's super more important to me that Tyler and Tyler who's sitting across from me right now, my admin and one of the guys who's on my content team who films me often, it's much more important to me that they blindly think I'm the best than an employee at Vayner that's not interacting with me more than once or twice a year because they know. And I was watching you walk through your office and all those, I guess, hundreds of employees and I thought, because you are your brand and because you are such a strong brand and because people gravitate to you, I'm sure that's one of the big selling points that they want to come and work for you. But not everybody can get that access to you. So I, I, I bet that's a huge challenge for you to figure out how you're going to divvy up Gary to yeah, your, yes and to all those people. Yes and no. I think, um, I think that a lot of them actually want to just work at a great agency and uh, haven't gotten into, don't, there's some people that are even weirdly, not oblivious, but really don't know the extent of what's happening out there with my life in that realm. And that's great, because I'll be honest with you, I associate much more to Gary Vaynerchuk, the CEO of VaynerX, VaynerMedia, than I do as Gary V. I, I associate more to being Gary Vaynerchuk, the guy behind the strategy of Gary V than Gary V. And, and look, Gary V is me. Like, it's, it's, it's 
my energy when I'm trying to talk to the world. Um, but most of my life is spent not talking to the world. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I do the best I can. I mean, I think that's just important as a CEO, let alone as a personality. Um, I think the people that are most bought into me, fans, get their way into spending time with me because they can't hold out, right? They ask for the meeting, they, they hover around, they hang out, so. Um, or some just kind of wait and wait for their moment. But um, it's, again, it's not something I, I kill myself with. I'm a marketer and a sea of digital marketers. Yes. I think I'm special or I think that I'm Good. different yep. because of the level of service and care and love that I give to the people who are in my um, yep. orbit. Yep. Uh, but I am not, I'm, not ni- I, I'm not niche down. I, I do know the value of it. I wish so badly that I could just like find a niche. Do you think that it's... No. Because I don't want to do just don't. like lawyers. Your niche is you. My, I'm not niche. My niche is that it's me and my perspective and my efforts and me. There's nothing more niche than being the human being. Okay, that's awesome. 